daily video Bible reading from the Net Bible, Matthew chapter 15 from the New Testament. Then Pharisees and experts in the law came from Jerusalem to Jesus and said, Why do your disciples disobey the tradition of the elders? For they don't wash their hands when they eat. He answered them, And why do you disobey the commandment of God because of your tradition? For God said, Honor your father and mother, and whoever insults his father or mother must be put to death. But you say, If someone tells his father or mother, Whatever help you would have received from me is given to God, he does not need to honor his father. You have nullified the word of God on account of your tradition. Hypocrites! Isaiah prophesied correctly about you when he said, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, and they worship me in vain, teaching his doctrines the commandments of men. Then he called the crowd to him and said, Listen and understand. What defiles a person is not what goes into the mouth, it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles a person. Then the disciples came to him and said, Do you know that when the Pharisees heard this saying, they were offended? And he replied, Every plant that my heavenly Father did not plant will be uprooted. Leave them, they are blind guides. If someone who is blind leads another who is blind, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, Explain this parable to us. Jesus said, Even after all this, are you still so foolish? Don't you understand that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and then passes out into the sewer? But the things that come out of the mouth come from the heart. And these things defile a person. For out of the heart come evil ideas, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander. These are the things that defile a person. It is not eating with unwashed hands that defiles a person. After going out from there, Jesus went into the regions of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that area came and cried out, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David, my daughter is horribly demon-possessed. But he did not answer her a word. Then his disciples came and begged him, Send her away, because she keeps on crying out after us. So he answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and bowed down before him and said, Lord, help me. It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs, he said. Yes, Lord, she replied, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, your faith is great. Let what you want be done for you. And her daughter was healed from that hour. When he left there, Jesus went along the Sea of Galilee. Then he went up a mountain where he sat down. Then large crowds came to him, bringing with them the lame, blind, crippled, mute, and many others. They laid them at his feet, and he healed them. As a result, the crowd was amazed when they saw the mute speaking, the crippled healthy, the lame walking, and the blind seeing, and they praised the God of Israel. Then Jesus called the disciples and said, I have compassion on the crowd, because they have already been here with me three days and they have nothing to eat. I don't want to send them away hungry, since they may faint on the way. The disciples said to him, Where can we get enough bread in this desolate place to satisfy so great a crowd? Jesus said to them, How many loaves do you have? They replied, Seven, and a few small fish. After instructing the crowd to sit down on the ground, he took the seven loaves and the fish, and after giving thanks, he broke them and began giving them to the disciples, who then gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied, and they picked up the broken pieces left over seven baskets full. Not counting children and women, there were 4,000 men who ate. After sending away the crowd, he got into the boat and went to the region of Megadan. God, 
I suspect that today you will probably at some point test me. I don't, I don't know all the reasons for doing this. Most of the time you prove to me something about my faith, about my walk with you. Uh, you show me areas that I need to work on. And most of the time, I love when you test me. Not because not because I always succeed. I fail a lot of times. But it's those times, God, when you test me that I grow the most. And it's also the time when the biggest blessings in my life have shown up after that time of trial. So it's interesting to me reading today about the woman you tested who came to you and said, my daughter is demon possessed. Please make it stop. And even the disciples were tired of her and told you to send her away because they were tired of hearing her cry after you guys. And you responded to her that it's not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. And you weren't insulting her as many Jewish people at that time were wont to do with, with the Gentiles. But you were testing her faith. Was she just one in thousands of people who thought of you as a miracle man, a magic man who could fix things. So you're kind of throwing it out there. Hey, I have bread. I'm not going to throw it to the dogs. But then she in turn says, yes, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. And what is so awesome about this God is she's alluding to the conversation you had with Abraham back in Genesis, uh, Genesis chapter 12, verse 3, where you're talking about the covenant with Abraham and the extended covenant that's going to include Gentiles. And she is saying, I know I am, I know I am but a Gentile in a Jewish world, but I have faith in you and I know who you are. And I know what was told to my forefathers about you. And Jesus knew when she answered him, Woman, your faith is great. Let what you want be done for you. How incredible is that? So God, when you test me today, or tomorrow, or next week, I do hope I rise to the challenge. I do hope I remember all your promises and, and your word and have faith in everything. But, but if I don't, I know your compassion and grace will fill in the rest as I learn whatever lesson I need to learn and and I grow in my relationship with you. So God, thank you. Thank you for the testing times. Thank you for the hard times. Thank you for the things that are frustrating. Thank you for caring so much about me that you want our relationship to grow and be deeper and stronger. It's so amazing that every day I think I can't love you more and yet the next day happens and lo and behold our relationship is even more than it was the next day and to me that is just incredible so test me today God <laughs> test me because I'm excited to see where our relationship is going in your son's name I pray amen <music>